On this channel, I specialize in making really complex looking images easy to create. So just follow along with my step-by-step -step tutorial of this painting and you will amaze yourself. So as usual, I'm using the app Procreate, but you can probably apply most of the process and the techniques I'm gonna show you to a different app on a different tablet, whatever it is you happen to use. But I am using the app Procreate on the iPad. And in terms of that, I've opened an A4 canvas. So that is 297 by 210 millimeters at 300 DPI. I've already pre-selected some colors. So I'll just clear those. So it's just these colors here. Each one of these colors has what is called a hexadecimal code attached to it. So if you go to the value section here, there's a box where you can type them in one at a time and all of those codes are down in the video description. You'll also find next to them a link that takes you to my Patreon and you can download the whole color file for free to save you some time. In terms of the brushes, I'm going to be using the soft brush with an airbrushing. I'm going to be using also the medium brush, again also with an airbrushing. And then for some of the cloud texture, I'm going to be using with an organic, the rainforest brush which might seem a bit strange because within the elements there is a clouds brush, but I really don't think that the clouds brush kind of works for me. I much prefer to use within organic, the rainforest brush for cloud formations. Before we get started, if you like this kind of tutorial, please give the video a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget the bell notification to make sure you do get notified of all my future videos as well. And with all that said and done, let's get started. So on layer one, I'm gonna to go to my colors. I'm gonna choose this first color, I'm just gonna drag it from that little circle at the top right to flood fill the entire canvas. Then I'm gonna to go to my airbrushing, soft brush. I'm gonna put my brush size up to really big size of about 40% and 100% opacity. And I'm gonna to go to my second color in now, which is a lighter version. And in this area, I'm just going to do a section like this. It doesn't have to be anything special because we're just going to go to the adjustments, the Gaussian blur, and I'm going to blur it in 100%. I'm going to create a new layer at this point. So tap on the layers, click the plus symbol, and I'm going to go back to my colors. I'm going to choose the third color in this time, which you can see on the color disc is an orange, but it is not quite the full brightness, a little bit subdued. I'm going to go back to my brush, my soft brush, still using it, but I'm just going to turn it down to about the 10%. Keep it on 100% opacity then. And about a quarter to a third of the way from the top, just draw a line. Now it doesn't have to be neat. It's got a bit of a wobble to it. Not a problem, because we're gonna to go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur anyway. We're gonna blur it in to about the 40%. And the good thing about working digitally is that if it doesn't look quite in the right place, we can just go to the transform tool and we can just move it down. And I, w I do want to move it a bit further down. On a slight thicker section of blue at the top. So we'll just move it down a little bit. So we're creating a slightly larger section there. I'm going to create a new layer. Go back to my colors. I'm gonna go for this lighter color, the fourth color. I'm gonna do similar again. Maybe just reduce it down a couple of percent to be 8% size. And just at the bottom parts of that band, we're going to do another stripe like that. Adjustments, Gaussian blur, and we'll blur it in again to 40%. Back to our layers, we'll create another layer. We're gonna to go to this orange color now, which is the fifth color in. We'll stay at the same size of 8% and still at 100% opacity on the soft brush. And again, we're gonna go for this lower section. Really vibrant, the orange. So again, we need to go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, and blur that one in as well. Again, to the 40%. So we've created a really nice transition now between these, those different colors. And it is important we have those different elements. It really just helps create a range of different colors, which works really well. Okay, so once we've got those transition colors, we're going to create a new layer, and then we're gonna change brushes to the organic and rainforest brush. We're gonna move along our colors to this color on the end here, which is the sixth color. And with the rainforest brush, we're gonna set it to about 3% size and about 80% opacity and just at the top initially I'm going to place in a few shapes and you can see that it creates some random formations here for you so it really helps 
You know, if you were just going to use the airbrush and you had to do every single mark yourself, whilst I enjoy doing that, this just helps you along a little bit, gives you a bit more confidence. Start to create some of those formations for you right from the outset. And then you can always add to it with something like the airbrush. But initially you're just gonna place some shapes, maybe one or two over here, so I'm just tapping them in. No real care with this initially. Then from that point, we're going to spend a bit longer, maybe turn it down a little bit to the 2% size and just spend a little longer getting the shapes that we, we really want there. So again, with the same principle, same kind of formations, we can have little breakaway sections like this too, but then we want it to be a series of clumps that are massed together. And you can apply it in different ways. So tapping is one of the methods. You can also just block it in with a kind of circular movement too. And then the brush will respond in different ways, which is quite handy. And we could just start to block in bigger sections of cloud over here as well. Again, no major care taken with this. It's just getting a sense of different kinds of textures. Having said that, cloud textures are a little bit tricky and really, I suppose, to a certain extent, it takes practice. And the more you do it, the more your eye's gonna judge what looks good and what doesn't look good. Like with anything, the more familiar you get with it, then the easier it will be. And the more you will be able to just judge for yourself. But you can see I'm just applying a series of different textures here and it all groups together in a larger formation of blobs, really. And then we'll move across. I definitely want it to form together in clumps, but then the gaps are just as important. So don't neglect to leave gaps because it will just become very uninteresting if you don't leave gaps. So think about it as a collection of shapes that group together, but then you're gonna have space between them here and there as well. And just a few more dashes and shapes over here. A few more over here. Maybe once a slightly larger bank of cloud over here. So let's allow them to amass together. So once we've got to about this point, I'm actually gonna to switch to my eraser, put the eraser on the airbrushing and soft brush. I'm gonna put it up to about 15% size and about 20% opacity. And I'm just going to soften in the bottom edge of some of these clouds. Now the reason I'm gonna do that is because I'm gonna switch color and I'm gonna to move to this color here. So the first one on the bottom, still with the rainforest brush, still at 2% size and now still at 80% opacity. I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna start bringing those two colors together a little bit. So we've got the influence of the blue still, but we're also gonna bring in this warmer color. In fact, we'll turn it down from 80. We'll put it really quite significantly lower, in fact, just because we want to do it a bit more gradually. So I'll put it about the 40%. And I can bring them together using this color now, and I continue to bring some more shapes into this lower section with this second color. So I think I might bring in like a elongated, stretched out bank of cloud over here with this color. Again, a few dots, a few dashes. We do need these broken sections, so don't neglect to do a few dashes and dots. You can see I'm doing it quite quickly. I'm not taking a particular large amount of time with this at all, really. I'm not speeding it up. I'm editing out one or two of the gaps, but you can see I'm doing it in pretty much real time. And then just a few more over here. We'll go back in and refine this a little bit, but we're just getting the basics in there to begin with. Go over some of this, extend some of that, warm color a little bit higher okay so it's very rough at this stage and that's fine we're going to go to the adjustments gaussian blur i'm just going to blur it in slightly just to soften the impact i'm going to put it to about five percent and it still keeps the majority of the textures and shapes but it's going to help us now and we're going to further refine this a little bit so we're going to go to our layers i'm going to create a new layer it's put it on top we're going to drag it so it goes underneath layer five now. So it is layer six, but it's gonna go underneath layer five. And we're gonna change the layer pr properties, the blend mode, so it's on normal at the minute. When you tap on the N, it opens this list and you see it's on normal, but we're gonna scroll down to add. You know it's selected because it changes from an N to an A. And we're also gonna change color. We're gonna go back to this color we used before, which was the fourth color. We're gonna have it still on the rainforest brush at 2%, capacity to about 
And what we can do now is we can start to just carefully this time. So a bit more time is going to be spent with this. We're just going to go in and around the edges of some areas of this cloud. Now, you don't want to do it everywhere. You want to keep it just hit and miss in some areas. And sometimes you'll get more of it just breaking out on its own. But really imagine, obviously the sun is in the, the very far distance, so it's behind all of the clouds and it's illuminating the rear side of the clouds that we're looking at. So we're looking at the shadow side for the largest part, but you'll see the highlighted side that's on the rear peeking round a little bit and you get a little bit of a halo effect around the edge. So we're just going in, we're just adding that. We've got it on the low opacity. I mean, if you feel like it's going too much, you could even turn it down even further. So I'll put it on 10%. Now bear in mind, the degree to which you press on with the Apple Pencil obviously makes a difference too. So if you're quite heavy handed, then definitely have it on the lower opacity. But the lower opacity is good because you can just start to build it up in smaller increments too, as I'm doing here, as you can see. And we can have some breakaway sections of this color too. It can just be on its own, doesn't need to be attached to the darker colors, but certainly it's going to work with them too. In addition to that color, we can try this orange as well. It's not going to be the purest form of that color because we've changed the layer blend mode to the add. So it's not going to be the color as we would normally use it. The reason I'm using the blend mode on add is that when we get to this area, we can really start to ramp up the light effect. And you'll notice that this particular blend mode is really useful for that. Because it's also behind the dark layer, you don't need to be too precious about it. So you really, you can just go for it. You can always erase bits when you've done too much of them. But you can just start to here and there add features in and around the edges of this cloud. So play around with the opacity. I put it down to 10%, but I might want to put it back up in certain areas. I want a slightly stronger, more intense version of this color. And again, we've changed to the, the orange now. So now it's a slightly different quality than that lighter color anyway. Add some over here. And also because it's on this add mode, it interacts differently with different colors. So if I add it here, you can see it's creating more of an orange look than it does when I add it up there, which is perfect. So when I'm adding it in and around the sections over in this area, it adapts itself to whatever colors you've already been using in that region, which is exactly the kind of effects that we want for our scene. And you can just, when you get to the cloud area, continue to do some dashes. Sometimes you can get bogged down in being too careful. There's a time and a place for being very careful and precise, but when you're laying down textures and getting the general effect, then you don't want to labor over those little textures too much at this point. You can always go back in and spend a bit longer and just refine those later on. But just initially, we just want to build in the general look and then we can refine later at your heart's content. So again, just take some time, go around some of these edges. So it can be at the top, it can be at the underneath. Keep a variety of different placements for this. Okay, I'm gonna come back to that, but I'm going to add a sun for our scene. So I'm gonna create a new layer. I'll probably put this one on the very top initially. We can play around with this, see how it works best. I'm gonna to go to the white color initially. I'm gonna change brush to the airbrushing. We'll put it on the medium brush. And we'll put it at around 5% size and 90% opacity. And I'm just gonna to decide to have the sun somewhere around here. So I can tap it a few times like this. Then, really nice effect you can do is you go to the adjustments, bloom setting, and then just turn that up. And you may as well put it up to 100%. It quickly snaps into that anyway. And that just has a glowing effect right from the outset. But we can add a lot more to that. We can create another layer on top. I'm gonna to change the properties of that. Again, tap on the N, scroll down to the add, like so. Then we're gonna to go to our colors. I'm gonna choose this orange color. So one in from the right, so this orangey yellow color. Still within the airbrushing, but we're gonna to change to the soft brush. I'm gonna put it up to about 15% size, and we're gonna turn it down on the strength to about 20%. We're gonna aim for the sun, tap it a few times. So literally I must've done that about four times, four taps. And you can see it's starting to build in the glow already, but we can do that more. So it's one, two, three, four, five. And again, it's just ramping up that effect, isn't it? We'll turn the size up to about 25%, one, two, taps. 
just a couple, turn it up to about 50% this time, so really go for it, much bigger, one, one tap. Let's not get too carried away. So you can see that's really brought it together, it's brought a glow, and because the other layer property was also on add, you can see it has really continued to ramp up that effect, which is perfect for what we're going for. Okay, I'm gonna go back to layer six, which had some of the highlights in the cloud. I'm gonna go back to this color I was using earlier, so the fourth color from the left. Go back to the organic and the rainforest brush, but I'm gonna turn it really low to about 1%, so significantly lower, and we'll keep it at around 20% strength. I can zoom in just a little bit. So now closer to the sun, we're gonna just go in, and we're gonna add a bit more, and spend a bit longer adding more texture in and around this area specifically. So you can imagine now, just like we've got shapes of cloud, blobs of cloud that have a lining around them, imagine now that you're adding the lining to some bits of cloud around here. Now even if you don't see the dark shape of the cloud, what you will see in this area is the kind of halo and the lining or the edge that goes around that cloud instead. So you're tracing around shapes that may not even be there. And you don't need to worry about going over the sun because it's on the layer property add, so it's impossible to add anything over the top of the sun that's darker now. So that gives you a lot of freedom, and makes your life a bit easier. Now it's quite yellow this, so we probably will do a little bit of more white in these areas a little bit later, but we can add a base color of this yellow. And what you'll notice that's really great about this is that when you move further away from that yellow area now, it actually gets more subdued and more into the, the color notes that it, it actually plays within, which is absolutely perfect. And it's also behind that other darker layer, isn't it? So that means that you can move along here and you can continue the theme of having the edge, of some of these cloud with highlights, but it's not gonna be anywhere near as strong or as vibrant as it is next to the actual sun. We'll press lightly as we get further away anyway. So it's a combination of that glow and the amount that we press on. And we can really ramp it up in this section. These textures we want to really be significant in this bit. But then as we get further away, we've still got these textures, but they're just, as you can see, less. Perhaps we'll just increase the size of the brush to a bit higher. So the top end of 2% for these top areas, that just allows us to add slightly bigger shapes when we need them in these upper regions. So really what you need to practice with, with this tutorial is just getting the shapes of this, some of these clouds right. It is gonna take time. Don't expect cloud shapes to come really naturally. It does take practice. And sometimes I can do still cloud shapes that when I sit back and look at them, I just go, I'm not happy with that. And it happens regularly still. So it's something that you're always going to grapple with and that's okay. Sometimes a painting takes on a life of its own. Sometimes it comes together really quite straightforward and easier. Sometimes it takes a bit more time and just you have to wrestle with it a little bit. I'm just gonna add just a bit more of this effect here. It can clump together and really create a larger area of that tone. And then I'll just tap in a few areas here as well. Move across like this. Okay, so I'm gonna go back up. Let's have a look. So we've got layer five that add all the darker colors. That's now above the layer we've just created. But importantly, it's below that glow. I'm gonna go back to my dark color here and there's nothing stopping us further adding in so we're still on the rainforest brush still at two percent size and i'm still at the 20 percent strength there's nothing to stop us adding in just a few more of these dark colors especially just at this top edge over here and then it quickly dissolves into the oranges and that works well i can always turn it up a little bit too so let's put it to 40 percent and a few really distinct tufts as they're breaking away. Just take the time, refine it. You can even change brush now at this point. So like I was saying before, you can go to the airbrushing, put it on the soft brush, turn it to somewhere like the lower part of 2%, put the strength up to about 40%. And then if you want to be a little bit more precise and just control some of these shapes a little bit more then you can do that now with this brush. So the rainforest brush has got you to the point now where you're happy and confident with some of the shapes, but you just go on and go in and tidy up. Perhaps just give it a slightly more solid edge in places. You can see I'm just going along the edge now, just giving it a firmer 
shape at that top edge, especially along that point here, not so much in these areas, but around here you can just really ramp up the crispness of those, some of those shapes. I think that actually works better that way. So using a combination of a brush that gives you a starting point, some random shapes and textures if you're not too confident in doing that, but then you can use another brush just to refine and tidy and control it a little bit more too. Personally, I'm a bit of a control freak when it comes to my images and I really spend a long time just super refining every little detail. So as much as I like to use brushes to get me to a point where it's perhaps speeding things up a little bit, I do like to go in there and micro control every little element. So you decide the level of refinement that works for you. And then again, we can go on with, with this color at the bottom and just like we were doing with the blue, we can continue to add some textures and shapes. I mean, you can add a little bit more in this lower region too. And we're spending quite a long time on the clouds in this tutorial, but sometimes that's just necessary. It's a massive dramatic feature in this scene. So take the time, get some practice, build up your confidence in this type of subject matter. Okay, at this stage, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the wrench symbol and the add, I'm gonna copy canvas. Then, if you leave it for a moment, what appears here is the paste. So we've pasted it, just deselect it. So if you noticed in the layers area, you've got the entire picture that we've done so far replicated in this little thumbnail here. You can deselect it or reselect it and you won't really see it change on here too much, but it's all contained there. What I want to do is just go to the selection tool, go to the rectangle, and I'm interested really in the top half, the sky part. So I want to select everything below that, like this, go to the layer, tap on the layer and clear it. Now again, it's probably not very clear what I've done so far, but if you look at the thumbnail, you can see it's got rid of the bottom section and it's just left the sky section. So that means now I can go to the transform tool, flip it vertically, and you can see probably much better now. I've only really got the the sky section left. So I'm gonna put that lower down and I'm just gonna move it probably somewhere to about here. So obviously we want the suns to line up. We want a little bit of a gap between them as well, something like that. But we're not gonna stop there. We're gonna to go to the adjustments and the motion blur. And we're just gonna slide it across until it gets to about the 50% like that. Then with the eraser on the soft brush, set to about 5% size and 100% opacity. I'm just gonna draw a line across now because you can see there's a top edge there that I need to get rid of. And I can snap to hold it to make sure it goes in a straight line as well. And I might just get rid of another line's worth there as well. Snap to hold it so that we can maintain that horizontal like this. And it isn't fully replicating or creating the idea of what we want for the water, but it just gives us a little bit of a start. So I'm going to create a new layer on top of that. I'm going to switch to my medium brush. I'm going to change my color to this first color on the middle row. I'm going to put my medium brush to 1% size and 100% opacity. And what I'm going to do now is along that top edge or thereabouts, I'm going to draw a line all the way across, hold it so it snaps to a straight line and then just position it however I want. Now, sometimes it's difficult to get it to line up to get it to be horizontal. So get it roughly where you think it should be. And don't worry, because you can always go to the transform tool and then you can just move it up to where you, exactly what you want it to be. And if you're not sure if that's going to be entirely horizontal, then you can go to the wrench, canvas, switch on the drawing guide, and you can see I've got it on a grid. If yours isn't automatically on a grid, you can go to the edit drawing guide and put it on the 2D grid. And it just creates a bit of a guide to tell you whether it's horizontal. And I'm quite happy with that. That's perfectly horizontal enough. Switch it back off, toggle it off, and there you go. I'm gonna continue with the medium brush, this color, set to 100%, but I'm gonna turn it up to the lowest part of 2%. I'm gonna move this line upwards. I might need to zoom in a little bit. I don't really wanna go downwards into this area. It's not a big deal if you do, you can always erase it, but I'm trying to just create some rocks now that will go upwards. Now this isn't really far distance, it's kind of like a middle distance set of features. But I just want to create them all the way across, which is pretty much our horizon line, isn't it? 
You can do obviously adding shapes like I'm doing now, but in addition to that, you can go back in with the arrays and remove some of them as well if you feel that that's gonna be beneficial. So these are some middle distance rock features. It's about as far as we're going to see on the land side of things, on the ground. Just be extra careful, try not to go below that line. It's just going to mess things up a little bit. So we'll continue to work above it, create some sticking up rocks. Something like that. And then I can go back in with the eraser, set to the medium brush as well. Turn it down again to the one or 2%, 100% opacity. And if I want to, I can just nibble away some bits of those rocks so it goes right down to the water bit. Perhaps I'll just decrease them in this section a little bit more, like this. Perhaps I might just reduce the height as well. Then I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to switch colours to this darker colour. It's pretty much just straightforward black at this point. Still on the medium brush, but I'm going to put it up to about 5%, 100% strength. And I just want to create a foreground rock. Maybe another rock, just going off the edge here. Maybe turn it down a little bit so we can be a bit more precision. And another rock. So keeping a flat edge, the top edge is what we can be a bit more creative with. And another couple of rocks here. Turn it down a little bit more as we get further away. So we're down in the 2% now. And we'll tidy this up, but we're just getting the, the rough sense of a collection of rocks that you're happy with and then they can start to sort of all merge together up here a little bit too. So this is our collection of rocks, but we can further add to it. I might just expand that a little bit so it juts out here as well. So once you've got your rock formations, you can go also with the eraser, set to the medium brush, the one or 2%, 100% opacity. It's important you want to lose some of the, the fuzzy edge. You don't want it to be soft brushed so you want to keep it quite crisp these are rocks after all you can just go in there and just create some extra textures and then once it hits the water we can leave that bottom edge because we're going to soften that in anyway again just create some nibbled away sections make your rocks more interesting especially when they're in the foreground you don't need to worry quite so much in the distance because they're just going to become a little bit more general looking and all these little blumps and bumps will become softened out and you won't see them I'll just spend a moment or two just making this foreground rock a little bit more interesting. Not to say you can't do anything in the distance, but maybe switch to the soft brush for that. We can still have it at the 1 or 2% size, and we can still chip away at it, but it doesn't need to be quite as sharp. So sculpt away your rocks until you're happiest with them, whatever works best for you. Maybe just get rid of the bottom edge in some places too if they're not quite working for you. Sharpen them up. I can also go back in, add a couple more features here and there as well. So I'm just going to put it back to what it was. As well as removing, you can always just add a couple more back in as well, obviously. You can do this later on. Okay, so we're going to create some shadows for them now. So we're going to stay with the same color. We're going to have it on the soft brush, but we're going to create a new layer above the rocks. So on the soft brush, we're going to put it up to 2% size put it down to about 50% strength. And we're just gonna go in now in this bottom section. In fact, we'll put the size of the brush up to about 5%. And we'll just go in and we'll soften in that bottom edge. And then we can allow it to just sort of disappear out in a soft finish. And we'll go in and we just want to get rid of that harsh edge at the bottom and then allow it to soften in. Something similar up here, just go in and get rid of that harshness at the bottom edge. And it has a double kind of impacts of creating kind of like a nice shadow obviously as it needs to be smaller rocks you need a smaller shadow don't you so turn the size of the brush down just to do that and what we're going to do next is we're going to do water in and amongst those rocks that will further kind of anchor them to the, the placement as well but to start off with some shadows really works just settles them a little bit in that location next we're going to create a new layer on top go back to our colors 
and we've got some of these really quite subdued colors in fact we're going to use them in addition to the bright colors we've already used obviously but we need to start subduing some areas so i'm going to go to this color which is second in from the right and i'm going to put the brush size to about five percent and about 40 percent strength and i'm just going to start say for example in this area just blocking out some of the light blue that was reflected i don't really want too much of that blue in the reflection so i'll just add this into this section it might what might be useful actually is to move this layer which is underneath the rock so we're not going to accidentally blot over the rocks now at this point so we can be a bit freer in its application so i'm just going to continue to block out some of that light blue area in this area what we really want is the strong highlights to be extending down into this region but not so much the light blues not quite as much anyway and then we can go to the next color and again we can just vary it up a little bit want a combination of the two next with this color or maybe go back to the original which was the second in from the right i'm going to stay on the soft brush but we're going to put it down to the two percent size and maybe even lower to about 30 percent strength and i'm just going to start building in some streaks over here this color maybe a band that cuts across maybe all the way across in fact and then i can always just have a section perhaps where it's really disrupting and breaking up the sun why not now we can go back in and add highlights but we just want it to perhaps be a little bit disruptive maybe even switch to maybe the blue color that we had in the sky might be quite good so the blue on the very top so again still on the two percent size build in a couple of streaks up here maybe another one that cuts across go back to our colors i think we need something quite dark so i'm going to go for one of these two colors here in fact i'm going to go for this color so the third in on the middle row turn it down to the lower part two percent keep at the 30 percent strength i'm just going to start creating some perhaps breaks in the waves just some anomalies coming into this area so just carefully start to tease that in and over here as well increase it up slightly to the two percent add some more in this region we well, just want to create a variety of different kinds of shapes in this area we can add a few more here as well maybe one or two just in that top area in this region up here just lightly start to add some breaks and bands in there from the left i wouldn't overdo them okay so we're going to create a new layer and importantly it's still underneath the rock layer we're going to change the properties again to the add blend mode and we're going to stay on this yellow color we used from the right hand side and with a soft brush at about two percent size and 30 percent strength we're just going to start building in through the gaps in these rocks just a hint that We've got some sections now where it's really reflecting some of the light again. And just left to right, creating some bands. Doesn't need to be super precise, just generally that kind of an effect. Concentrated mainly around this area because obviously that's where the sun is. And then I'm going to turn it really low to about the one or two percent, low on the strength. And I'm just going to have the impact of the sun over here just really bringing out a glow in this area so i'm just doing some really light dashes letting them build up letting them cross over overlap building up that effect gradually but i also want to perhaps just in the very center of that area just go over and over it until it really builds in builds in a highlight so i'm just going to keep going over it initially and then I think what might help is if we go to the adjustments motion blur and just slide it in a little bit like that you can see the effect it changes it. it looks quite scruffy like that but if we do that it just blends it in a little bit better then we can really ramp it up in this area now with a few extra tweaks just building because obviously the sun is really reflecting strongly in this area perhaps i've had slightly broken it doesn't all need to be completely Join together and obviously we can continue it up here as well here and here as well 
maybe just turn it up to about the 4% and just bring it together a little bit, soften it in, extend that effect like this. Turn it down again and really focus in. Get one or two areas in here. We could even go to the white and just, again, just a little bit anyway, just really bring out the brightest elements of that. Bring it out reflected in the water additionally. Okay, last few touches now. So I'm gonna create a new layer, go back to my colors. I'm going to use this second color in, 2% size and 20% strength. And I'm just gonna build this in. Some of these sections, slightly lighter color that's just creeping in here and there, especially around here, just to add it to the mix. So again, I guess it's the influence of the, the sky coming in here after all a little bit, but just not quite in the absolute reflected sense. I'm gonna create a new layer, but I'm gonna put it on top of the rocks this time. So I've got the top rock layer or the shadow one, create a layer on top of that. And I'm just gonna subtly feed in now and we just want to separate the rocks from their shadow just a little bit here and there. We don't want to do too much of that, just a hint. And we we'll also stay on the same layer. Go back to these two colors. We'll pick that one first. So third in from the left, turn the brush down to about 2%, keep it at about 20%. And I just want to create some highlights along the top edge of some of these rocks, just so they're not completely flat and lifeless. We're just adding a hint of texture. Now I recommend you don't go overboard with this because the more you do, the more you're going to have to do. Whereas if you just keep it as a hint, actually you get away with that because it's predominantly a kind of silhouetted effect. So you can keep your life much easier with this just by creating a hint rather than overdoing the detail. So just a, a, a suggestion of texture along the very top is gonna save you a lot of aggravation for this tutorial. Last couple of touches, I'm gonna to stay on this same layer. I'm gonna go back to my colors. And I think I might use this orange color in fact and keeping it at around 3% size and 20% opacity. I think I just want to close in a little bit of this section. I feel like if we close it in a little bit, subdue it in and around that sun area just a little bit more and make this bit pop out all the more that way. So we can just shut it down to the left and right of it just a little bit more and it will further just enhance the sense that it's glowing immediately below where the sun is. And we can also change to another color, maybe this second in from the right. And we can just add that to the mix as well so it doesn't glow too much orange. Maybe just modify it a little bit. I also feel like I just want to go back a couple of layers. I'll go back to layer 15, it just needs to be underneath the rocks. I'm gonna use this orange just to bring it in a little bit more. Now I can be quite loose with this because it's not gonna go over the top of the, the rocks. I just wanna bring a bit more of the orange glow into other areas like this. Extend its influence just a little bit more like that. You can take it really close to the glowing section and, but we don't wanna overlap it. And then we can take it really close over here as well. Just tease it into that very edge, something like this. One last detail just to really enhance the sky. So I'm gonna to go to my top layer, go to my yellowy color with my soft brush, turn to 2% and really low on the strengths about 5%. And I'm just gonna build in a couple of sunbeams very, very lightly. Now I want them to be super light and they're gonna obviously come from the sun outwards. Now you can very easily overdo this the last tutorial I did, I did really strong sunbeams and that was fine for that, but I want them to be really subtle on this one. So they're there, but they're not overpowering. It's almost something you won't really notice. You won't see it as such, but you'll feel the impact of it rather than noticing it. Something like that. So it's really subtle, but it just brings it out a little bit more. Okay, I'm gonna leave this tutorial here at this point. If you've enjoyed this, please remember to hit the thumbs up hit the subscribe and also the bell notification to make sure you are notified of future tutorials. Down in the video description, there is a link to my Instagram and also a Facebook group. So if you have a go at this and you wanna tag me, then you can do that in those areas. Thanks for watching, catch you back here soon.